Father, I just I thank you that you are where we are. And so we are gathered here together today in your name. That we have come together so we can be here for each other. We can encourage each other. God, we can love on each other. And we bring you with us. And so you are here with us. And you love on us as we love on your children. Father, I thank you that you have something to say to our hearts today. God, that this word, I believe, is something that you are speaking to each and every heart that sits in this building and that listens to this message that you are whispering in our ears, there's more for me. There's more for me. God, may we hear it. May we hear it, Father. May we hear it. I want you to repeat after me. My ears are open. My heart is open. I will hear the word of the Lord. And there is more for me. Amen. Amen. You know, I've been listening to my fellow ministers here lately, and I hear Minister Marcia talking about a move of God that he's saying, make room for me. Make room for me to do what it is that I want to do in your life and in this place. And Pastor Paulette is talking about us maturing and growing up, you know, m withstanding the storms of life, growing to the place that we can. And I hear these two things together, and I hear God you know, whispering to my heart, there's more for me. That's what each one of us should be hearing from him today. Um, it reminds me of um, one of the first things that I heard him say to me in connection with this church, one of the first, um, first contacts that I had with this church was I attended a um, women's conference. And... I didn't have a lot of experience in what I knew was hearing his voice at the time. But I knew that I heard him say to me, from my perspective, it's okay to be me. Yes, that started something in my life. Yes. It really just set me on the course for me to learn and realize he was teaching me, opening up my eyes, that it's okay to be me. He made me who I am, and he intends for me to be me. I don't have to be anybody else but me. And so when I hear him say, there's more for me, that's what I think of. Yeah. You know, he's speaking to you. Your spirit is rising up within you saying, there's more for me. Yeah, yeah. So I, wa I want to ask you, when you hear the word on these things, can you see yourself in it? You know, Pastor Paulette was talking to us last week about you. You receive this word for you. Listen for you. Listen for yourself. So when you hear about this move of God, and they both mentioned it in different ways, but it's the same thing, I believe. Do you see yourself in that? Or do you see someone else? You know, um, Let's see. I was raised in church, but that whole time growing up in church, always responsive to what I felt, you know, the leading that I felt in my heart, in just the way that I knew to respond, I responded. So I wasn't really running away from it, but I never had a clue in all of those years growing up in the church that I would be called to the pulpit ministry at 31 years of age. Not a clue. It never occurred to me that that would be a place for me. And so as I've pondered that over the years, and you know that was seven years ago this month, I preached my first message. And it was really quick, you know, when I heard the call, I talked to pastor and she said, well, if you ever have anything to, that you feel is a message, and I said, well, as a matter of fact, I do. <laughs> so he just started talking and so it was cool, but that's seven years ago this month. Wow. 
it was um, May of yeah. what, 2012. <laughs> but, you know, if, that's kind of weird because, you know, you think about people being called to the ministry in the traditional churches that I grew up in. You know, that's not how it worked. <laughs> they responded or they either responded or they ran at a young age usually. So, but that's not how it happened for me. But, you know, I just, I just didn't see it. And so when I think about that, I'm thinking about, you know, why not, God? Why, why not? Was I missing something or what? And, you know, I thought, well, maybe it was because um, I didn't have the perception that women could be preachers. Maybe that was it. But no, you know, I, at very young age, I saw woman pastors. I was under a woman pastor as a little girl. So I don't think that was it. I think really what it was that I never saw myself as a spiritual enough person. Just, I just wasn't that kind of person. I still kind of struggle with that a little bit today. But I think that was it. That wasn't me. You know, the perception that these people, usually vocally anointed people, put out of the way that they are, you know, God didn't, I didn't hear from God in the way that they said they heard from God. I didn't have the same experiences and feelings that they said that they had with God. And so, from my perspective, that just wasn't me. I had no idea. There's more for me, right? So do you see yourself in these things? When we talk about how, how God has great things to do in your life, how you are the word of God revealed on this earth, that you are living in the kingdom of God. It's here and now, and we're living it out. There is a maturity. There is a strength. There's a joy that's going to bring you th through the difficult parts of life. There is a working of the Holy Spirit that he wants to do. Can you see yourself in these things? I want you to hear, there's more for me. You know, I had no clue about that until it was spoken into my life. We were, Brian and I were just us in the vehicle coming home from Tulsa or something like that one night, and we were talking about church stuff. It was just Pastor Paulette up here at the time, and she was tired. And so we were talking about, you know, what's next? What do we see? What can, we, what can be done? And he said, I can see you doing this. And it was just, it was a pivotal moment for me. It had never been spoken into me before. But he spoke what he saw. And that was the word of God revealed to me at that moment. And so I want this to be a pivotal word for you today. There's more for me. Amen. <laughs> You will never take a step forward until you believe there's somewhere to go. If I don't know that there's somewhere for me to go, I'm never going to get up out of my chair and take a step. That's just naturally how it works. So who wants to go forward with me? Yes, let's take a step forward today. And no, there is a place to go. You know, I remember thinking at a point in my life that um, life wasn't bad, really, but it was just work, come home, do whatever I wanted to do, really, you know. In my young 20-somethings, it was work, college, come home, watch TV, or live to Ada, like to go to the park and walk, you know. And it just came to a point to where I know inside me that there's more to life than this. I've got to 
take that step, whatever it is. I knew it was in the church because, you know, I was raised in church. So I, I knew that that was a place that I belonged and a place that could take me where I desired to go. Couldn't tell you what it was at the time, you know. But I knew there's more to life than this. Let's look in Acts. Acts chapter 2 is where I want to go today. At this place, we are looking at a group of people that it's time for them to take that next step. It is time, God says, that his will would be lived out on the earth, right? We're looking at the group of disciples and followers of Jesus after his ascension. So he told them, you know, I want you to go and wait and you're going to be prepared there as you wait. And in Acts chapter 2, starting verse 1, it says, When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. Acts chapter 1 tells us that that was about 120 people. So there's about 120 people all together in one place at one time. It says, And suddenly... There came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. What I want you to see here is that there were 120 people. It wasn't just the 11 or the 12, you know. It wasn't just the original. It wasn't just the original, the 11, and the extra guy they had over here and Mary, the mother of Jesus. It wasn't just the 11 or 12, Mary, the mother of Jesus, Martha and Mary and Lazarus, you know, doesn't name them. But, you know, you think of the people following Jesus, his disciples, being all together in one place after his ascension, and you think of that core group of people. But, no, there's 120 of them. So, So this wonder, this thing that we see here that's being described, the will of God being lived out on the earth, is 120 people. It's everyone from the loud, vocally anointed, outgoing people who are probably sitting in the front of the room. Everyone from them to, you know, the quiet little girl in the back. The little boy who may have been, I don't know, they might not have done this at the time, but playing with his cars on the floor, you know. It was everyone. It says they all were filled, and they all spoke. And think of the impact that this had on their area. What an exciting time to be in. Okay, on down to verse 16. Okay, so, you know, you know they cause a scene. A ruckus in town and everybody starts looking and saying what is going on with those people they must be drunk Peter stands up and he says well they're not drunk like you think that they are he says but this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel and in the last days it shall be God declares that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams even on my male servants and female servants in those days i will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy and i will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below blood and fire and vapor of smoke Then verse 21 says, And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
You know, we quote that verse 21 and we think, yes, we know that. Yes, everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm saved. Great. You're saved. Great. What about the rest of this? He says, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh. You're going to prophesy. You're going to have visions. You're going to dream dreams. Where did that go? Yeah. All. Oh, this includes you. There's more for me. You are a sign and a wonder. Just like this was to all the people watching that day. And what was it? 300 or 3,000? 3,000 were saved that day because of what they witnessed. What they witnessed going on with these people. I don't have the knowledge and training to interpret all of this stuff. But I read that like there around verse 19 and it says blood and fire and vapor of smoke. And I'm like, God, I really don't know what this means. <laughs> but one thing that I can see in this is blood. How about the blood of Jesus that had just been spilled and saved us all, right? And fire. I know enough to know they just saw tongues of fire. So maybe that means now then the infilling of the Holy Spirit in their lives. And what about that vapor of smoke? What is smoke? Where there's smoke, there's fire, right? So could the smoke then be the evidence of fire? Blood is the blood of Jesus that saved them and us. The fire is the Holy Spirit indwelling. And the vapor of smoke is the evidence lived out that he is there. Amen. Yeah. I want you to take note of the prerequ prerequisites that Jesus gave them to receive this miracle. It was found in Acts 1-4. It says, And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So what is he saying? He's saying, stay, stay where you are, right. wait. So they had to obey. Right. I'm sure they were ready to go on home. You know, this show's done. <laughs> Don't really know what's coming next. So I'm going to go home and, you know, hug my family and eat and rest. And we'll see what happens next. If nothing happens by Monday morning, I'm going to go back to work. But, so no, he's saying, I want you to stay here and wait for the promise. So they had to be obedient to what he said. And then he said, you heard. You have heard the word. You know this in your heart, even though you don't know what it looks like yet. You know it. You heard it from me, and you will be filled. Right. Yeah. So the prerequisites here are hear and obey, right? And you will be. This is more of, you know, they had no, I, they had no idea. We think of living a good Christian life in order to receive his gifts, live out his callings, serve him, do what he wants us to do as some big complicated thing. You know, I have to do this and this and this, and I'll have all my ducks in a row so I can live through this next thing that's going to happen to me. No, they had no clue how, what, what they were doing. They had been following this man around for years now, and they still didn't know. <laughs> they heard him talk a lot, but they didn't have the privilege of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit that teaches us today. So I totally get why they didn't know, okay? 
But he's telling them, all you got to do, guys, is wait right here. Something's coming. I know you don't know, because then they started asking about, okay, so when's the kingdom going to be revealed? Okay, when are you going to come and take over this place? Because we're suffering here. <laughs> That's kind of what we do today. <laughs> when are you going to take me out of this situation? No matter how you, what you name it, you know, some name it one thing, some name it another, but we all want out of whatever's difficult. <laughs> So, where was I going? <laughs> Just, they heard what he had to say, and they waited. Is all that they had to do. And it put them in the place for them to receive what only he knew they needed to receive. To go through what only he knew that they were facing to go through. So simple so simple we make it complicated and they had no other qualifications to receive the holy spirit you know right. nothing to qualify them and he says in his word i'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh they didn't know it but one thing that he meant in that was not just you jews israelites whatever they were called at the time on my servants did that mean their servants their foreign people that had come in too yeah and he said you're going to be my witnesses in samaria and judea and all through the all the earth well that means everybody yeah they still didn't know what he was talking about but it says in chapter 1 verse 8 he says but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. So what he's saying here is, guys, you really don't know what you're talking about. But here's the one thing. You will receive power and you will be my witnesses. That's the truth that I need you to know right now. Forget about all of this other stuff. And so to me, this right here, in my mind, brings together these two aspects that Minister Marcia and Pastor Paulette are talking about here recently. And um, Pastor's going to be continuing that, I think, next week. But this brings together these two personalities, almost, really. This verse right here, he says... You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses. The power is from the Holy Spirit. Yes, you will experience something. It's going to be different for everybody. Our experiences with the power of God are mostly different. Because we're different. We experience God in different ways. We hear him through our own filters. We have our own pasts and knowledge and everything else that makes us up. And so he is so good to speak to you and minister to you in the way that is customized holy to you he knows exactly what you need i there's so many things that i could list off very specific very personal experiences that i've had with god dreams visions healings prophecies all of these things that you think about when you think about the working of the holy spirit the supernatural gifts the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. I believe that God is real. The Holy Spirit is real. He's a person. And he desires to make himself real and tangible to each and every one of us. 
These things that I said I could list, they are things that remind me that my God is real, that he's really here with me, and that he really cares about me, that I am significant enough that he would talk to me. Yeah? Yeah. He's very loving, and he's a gentleman, and he's not going to do anything with you that's not going to benefit you in a positive way. And, you know, those times that I have experienced with him are times that were and they are still very powerful moments in my life. I can still reach back on my memory of those things and encourage myself, you know? There's things that I saw in the spirit when I was a teenager that I still expect to this day. It's just for me. And when I realize that I've seen it, oh, how glorious of a day that will be, right? <laughs> so he says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. It's real. It's real. You know, this thing that went on, on uh, in Acts chapter 2, if we were to witness that today, we'd probably think the same thing those heathens were thinking. What's wrong with them? <laughs> but the purpose of the Spirit on the day of Pentecost was only to make an impact on the believers' lives and to be a sign for the others around them to believe. When they heard what they heard and they saw what they saw, they believed. They saw the sign, they heard the word, and it changed their mind. Those two things together, the power of the Holy Spirit at work in their midst and the word of God spoken out to them, pricked their hearts, and they believed. And then being the witness, you will be my witnesses, is your practical life. You have the power of the Holy Spirit at work in conjunction with the word of God lived out in your life. This is your practical life. How you get through the storms. How you act kind and mature around other people with them. How you interact with them. You are revealing the proof of Christ to the world. This is the sons of God revealed on the earth. You know, at that particular time, they were literally witnesses to Jesus' life, death, resurrection, and ascension. When he said, you will be my witnesses, they were literally witnesses of the events that happened that they saw. And so they took those events and they spread the word. They wanted all to believe who would believe. But today, very similarly, you are a witness. What have you seen? What events have you seen? What proof have you seen that he's alive in your life? Just as they were literally witnesses, we are witnesses for how he is real in our life. When your world falls apart and you don't, you're being proof of Jesus alive in you and real. I like how he is real. He is really real. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Where do I go from here? Do y'all believe? Have you heard? Have you heard the news this morning? Do you believe it? There's more for me. There's more for me. I want everybody to stand up, and I want you to believe with me, since there are so many that are enjoying their three-day weekend, <laughs> or other reasons that they're not here, because you guys have heard the word with me this morning. I want you to do something very special with me, please. I want you to believe with me that 
all of those people will hear the word as well. They hear this word. It has been spoken in their atmosphere. And God's word will not return to him void, right? So we believe that every single person that this word was spoken out for, they hear it. Whether it's spoken to them directly, it may be someone else that says something to them. Something they hear on the TV or the radio, something they see on Facebook, but they will encounter the word that there is more for me. And they will make it personal to them. God will make it personal to them. He will speak to their heart individually and their eyes will be opened and they will see there's more for me and so they'll get up out of their spiritual chair because they know that there is somewhere to go now right they know there is somewhere for me to be so i'm going to get up from here and i'm going to take the step that's all that we ask from you god this morning Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I'm going to read Luke 1 over you, starting in verse 35, just a few verses here. I speak it over. Everyone in attendance here, everyone listening, and everyone that is represented at Cornerstone. It says This is Mary we're talking about. It says, And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. Mr. Marcia said that we are pregnant, right? Do you believe it? And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, Father, thank you for the work that you are doing around the world. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Thank you for your word, Father. We praise you for the intention that you have over our lives, for what you accomplished fully in the spiritual realm at Calvary. You are making happen in our lives today. Thank you for your good, loving intentions over us. Lord, we hear your word today, and we agree with you. There's more for me. So we get up and we take a step and you will lead us in the direction you will have us go. Thank you, Father God. Everybody say, Amen. Amen. Amen.